going live right now. Just give it a, you should see like the live stream on the top. I see it. Just give me a second. Just make sure it's working over here. So we could say that so this doesn't work. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hey, guys, how you doing? It's Kevin here. Bring you a video on information technology. Hope you guys are having a good day. And um, I guess happy Saturday. And today I am actually honored and actually privileged to be with someone in IT has been in IT for like, I think 30 years, I think maybe more, but I'm here with, with John, AKA professor black ops. Um, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm glad to be here. I'm doing well. It's Saturday. It's beautiful outside. I can't complain. And you know, I'm, I'm in a happy, I'm in a happy place. And um, yeah, I am actually super excited about this interview. This is going to be fun. So the way it works is typically what I do is I ask him a bunch of questions and then anyone that wants to ask him a question in the comment section, you could go ahead and ask him. But I'm going to do that, that, that uh, interview. Like when you go to a job interview, it's like, tell me about yourself. So tell me about yourself. Oh, well, um, <laughs> I've been in IT for 30 years. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Cut me off if I go too long. <laughs> I got my computer science degree back in ooh, uh, 1990. I got an MBA in 1995. Um, I'm old school. I went to traditional IT route. I became a programmer. I was a programmer for 20 years. I did Oracle and Oracle Forms. That's actually a large million dollar database. Um, usually I work for government clients. I've been doing that for a very long, long time, probably the last 20 years. I've done everything from education to insurance to my favorite company was they used to actually build malls. So we learned how to acquire land, which I thought was interesting for my domain. So I've done everything. I've been a DBA, programmer, web admin, system admin, project manager. Then I um, graduated to uh, cybersecurity. I stayed in there because the money was pretty good and I like to eat. So that's kind of a high level <laughs> view of my background. If you got any additional questions on any of those areas, just let me know. <laughs> So, so, cause I know, I know you have a YouTube channel called Professor Black Ops. You're a real professor, right? You actually train students and stuff like I that? Am, yeah, I forgot that. Uh, as a give back and uh, a, a friend of mine um, got me into teaching. I'm an adjunct professor at night. I actually teach uh, intro to cybersecurity. Once you're done with my class, uh, they give you a voucher to take the security plus certifications. Cause since it's a local community college, like we talked about, they're trying to do education with search and put those together. And I teach uh, forensics, and every now and then I teach advanced forensics. So I'm actually a real professor at an adjunct. I do have a master's degree, which you need to teach at a local college. But once again, we've been having that debate, uh, degrees versus certs. I think certs are a, a very viable option. Actually, a cheaper option could be a better option. Probably five years ago, Keep It Techie kind of finally convinced me. I was elitist. I thought you had to have a degree, but I'm changing as I get older. An old dog got a couple new tricks, so I'm actually... Uh, and the weird thing is, too, I worked at DOD for you to qualify your job. Now, you got to have an industry uh, specific cert. I think it's 5770, I think is the DOD term, meaning you got to have a certificate in your job. Because my degree is, what, 30 years old? Those skills I learned probably even, even you know, relevant now. Everything changes so quick. Awesome. And then what, what are your, I guess, what's your, this is going to be a random question. Like, what, mm -hmm. what's, um... Cause I know you've been in IT for a really, really long time. Like long time. how, how has, how has IT changed? Like oh my God. from a long time ago to today, like 2021, like what are the key differences have you noticed? And also with the whole pandemic going on, like mm -hmm. how has that affect you as an IT person? Okay. Let me get the first one. Let me get the first one. Well, you got to remember when I started IT is the network wasn't even on the internet. We were actually doing network. So people were actually doing all your homework actually on a three and a quarter disc. So the internet was just really getting going when I was in college. I did all my uh, uh, programming really on a mini uh, mini IBM computer. We were still kind of around green bar paper. Um, when I did it, the smartphone one isn't even bidding when I get in there. You got to think the smartphone what, what was, wasn't even out in the 80s. <laughs> the smartphone got good in the 90s. So you can see just that alone. Um, we were doing on a mainframe. So then it went to many computers, then it went to client server. Now it's going to the cloud. So that's probably five iterations of technology I went to. And that's one thing I tell my students is, that's the good and bad thing about IT because you can, you can jump on a wave and make a lot of money and you can miss a wave and become broke. 
How do you do you know what a BlackBerry is? Half of my students don't know what a BlackBerry is. That was the most popular phone ever invented, man. Wow, he was like, yeah. But you remember, he <laughs> used to have the hard keyboard. If I know BlackBerry programmers were making hundred thousand dollars, those guys would disappear. Garmin, mm -hmm. all that stuff is free now. How are you gonna compete with free? So I mean, so that's the transition. One of my students is. Um, I used to teach at a for-profit uh, college for IT. It was really rough. This guy came up. You know, he came up. He was confided to me. He said, uh, Professor, I've been locked up for 25 years. When I went in, the iPhone 1 didn't exist. And the iPhone, he was on iPhone 6. So he was struggling to do his work because he never typed on a computer because he was locked up. So that's the, that's the vastness of that and how it's changed over the years. Wow. Well, um, I was going to ask you another question. Um, what, what's the, uh, I guess. A pandemic. Let me hit the pandemic. Yeah, I was asking you about the pandemic too. So what, how has that affected you as a teacher or a professor? For me, it's not because, uh, as you well know, IT professorship, we all went to Zoom. I'm actually enjoyed it. I told my boss, I ain't never coming back in an office, man. <laughs> I've been, and all my classes now are Zoom. Some of my students don't like it because I've had them before and they like our interactions in class. But for me, I don't leave the house. <laughs> I can just make all my money remotely and they can drop it. So for me, actually, it probably actually helped me more than not because I don't have to leave my house. I can actually do more work, side work, additional work, take more classes because I don't have to drive. I don't have to get dressed. Well, I guess I have to get dressed. <laughs> but those are the things, you know, you can do. And um, so, no, so for my job, it actually, um, actually increased my work. Got it. And how, how's, um, I guess for, for, for you, like, I'm, I'm going to go back to, cause you've been in IT for a really long time, right? Long so time. we're talking about this. What, what, what have you seen like in IT for years of experience? Like what is like the, the, the good, the bad and the ugly in your, in your, in the in being in IT for a really long time. Like, what have you seen? Like what, what, what's a, I guess, cause you're a veteran in IT for a really long time. So what's your advice for someone that's brand new to IT? Because cause you've seen a lot. So I'd like to know your insights on that. I mean, I think you tell them, man, the beautiful thing is you can do certs, you can do degrees, you can do all that online. You need to just pick what you want to learn and just get it. Let's grind and get it. There's nothing you can't learn. You got a great t uh, channel, Keep It Techy, Tech G. There's a lot of dudes out here getting it. And it, the information is free. And you can get in, you know, they can come in, they can ask questions, they can pay some money and just a little bit of money. You can really get an IT and really get your foot in the door and really get started. So I think that's the easy, that's the one of the good things I've seen. Because in the old days, I worked with people that were elitists. If you didn't have a college degree, if you didn't go to a major university, I was at a um, Fortune 10 pharmaceutical company. A guy who was looking at uh, a resume, he says, I only look at Ivy League and Big Ten people. I go, what? He goes, when we post a job, we get a, a thousand resumes. How am I supposed to cut it? So I'm like, dude, you're losing out on a lot of talent. And I just asked him, because we were cool. I go, dude, you're killing diversity. The amount of black dudes going to Ivy League has got to be 0.001. <laughs> Come mm -hmm. on, so you cut. Um, so the, the bad part I see, um, um, I think a lot of times, too, is from, from, a, from a, a bad perspective, I guess it's not bad, is you, you're competing with people around the world now. With Zoom, like I do side work and when you bid on it, you bid on people really in India that don't need to leave India. And all the big companies, IBM, Oracle, SQL Server, I mean, Microsoft, they got 5,000 uh, programmers overseas and networking guys overseas. So now you competing with people around the world for some jobs, right? Because now when you do networking, you don't have to leave. You can do it all through the uh, browser. Mm -hmm. Software defined, you, you, I mean, you need one person to maybe reboot a switch, but majority of that stuff can be overseas. Right. So that's probably kind of the, the bad part about it. You know, I was going to ask you another question. Like what, I guess, because I, I know you work in security. I, I, we're we're going to get to security later, but I want to ask you, what would be your advice for someone brand new to IT? Like how would, how would you tell them to start? Like what, what advice would you give them since you, you've been in the IT market for a really long time, like going into 2021, like how would you, what advice would you give them? What sort should they start? Like what should they do if they're brand new to IT? I mean, I think everybody was saying, God, I call it the big three, A plus, network plus, and security plus. I think your platform is actually right on time because I would say 35% of my students go to help desk first. 
Because if you don't know anything and you're brand new, 90 percent of the time you're gonna go to help desk, right? That's I think that's just part of the group. So you go to help desk, you get your skills up, then you can go to networking or programming or because like you said, most people aren't doing the traditional degrees where I took a bunch of programming class, so I'm gonna get into programming. Most people don't get into programming, so if you do network security plus. Nine times out of 10, they're going to put you on help desk. Number one is you need to know how that company operates. Number two is they want to make sure you come to work and showing up on time before they move you up to the next area. So they, they're testing you. Half the work, half the um, thing is showing up for the job. I'm sure you've met a lot of people that they don't want to show up for work. So I think help desk, I think your platform is perfect because I would say 30, 40% of my students, once they graduate with their associate, they go to help desk while they work on their bachelors and learn the trade. And what what's your what's your thought process on this? I always argue about this. This is like mm-hmm. an argument I have with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, I, I could I, I'll get a degree, then I can make six figures and I could jump uh-huh. help desk. What do you what's your thought on that process? I'd like to know what your thought process is on that. I'm with you on that. Unless you got the hookup, unless you know somebody, they're gonna put you through the process of going to help them. There's very few people I know that have just got an IT and start making six figures. The people I know did that, they had a special quality in the domain knowledge. I knew a lady who was especially in biology and we were working on a biology system. So she had a domain of a biologist to help the programmers. So that's how I came. She got to make a lot of it. No, most of my students that leave with associate, they're going to come out and help desk and they're going to come out making probably $20 an hour, maybe 25 if they're lucky. There's no magic bullets to this, man. There's no get rich quick scheme. And if you do it, you step in a whole bunch of steps and you're not building a good foundation. So that one little thing you make in six figures, that could be the Blackberry. Once you can't do that anymore, you're going to disappear. So I think you need to work from the ground up. I kind of get it out of the digital mud, get your foundation in and work your way up. Because then you got a broad skip. Like I'm old school. You became a programmer, system analyst. Then you got to be a DBA. Then you got to be an essay. But now people are going straight to DBAs. But if you're a DBA and you've never been a programmer, you don't even know what I need. You don't know what my requirements are because you really work for the programmers. You need to create the database a certain way. If you've never done that, how are you going to do it? Right? You can, but then I got to tell you a lot. Then I'm upset with you. <laughs> like, dude, these are things you should have learned at the ground floor. You skip these steps. Now you don't know these steps. So I'm kind of with you on that one. Yeah, but with me, as I, I get that argument a lot because then people want to be cybersecurity and then they don't even know what Active Directory is. They don't even know what group policy is. They don't know about NTFS or different OUs and stuff like that. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, you know, just got to learn. And, and, and since I do cybersecurity and I got to work with those guys, I don't need to be intimately familiar, but I need to know what an OU is. I need to know what Active Directory is. I need to know how to read Active Directory because when I give you security checks, we got to talk about them. If I don't understand what you're doing, I can't have I can't make sure you're doing your part securely. And the answers you do for my checklist that I got to give to a government client, I got to make sure you're doing it right. Right? I don't need to know everything intricacy, but if I give you some questions, you can ask them. I at least got to understand it enough to know if you know what you're doing and you're filling them out right. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing too. Is like a lot of people. Um, they I seen people. Um, in my in my job experience, I worked in an MSP environment um, where they hire someone for level two position as an IT engineer, and um, he didn't know anything about um, help desk or service desk or like tier one, tier two, but he got the job because he knew somebody. So then he got the job, and then one day I, I went on vacation, and I took the day off, and I left him there for a week, and it was a disaster. Like he he unplugged the whole switch and router of the IDF room. And he took out the whole network for a hundred people in the office and wow. everyone's just sweating, man. It's just like, I'm like, you have to understand how infrastructure works. Like, and we, we tried training him and I'm like, whatever you do, don't touch anything. Like, leave it alone. Don't touch anything. And he, he went in the back. He thought it was a, he thought it was a network issue. So he unplugged the whole thing by accident. Oh, I just, did. But too, as I, I tell people this part too, is, and this is more, uh, organization about you always gonna have that guy that got the hookup but everybody knows he don't know anything so don't let him do anything so i see a lot of people get but about him i'm like dude that's the president's nephew's brother so there's always gonna be that guy 
That's good. <laughs> you know, so I tell people, don't get upset. You, your parents have had a hookup. That's not you. But as you see, that guy doesn't know anything. So if for some reason he gets let go, people are going to find out that he don't know anything. But mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's just part of the management structure. But there's always a couple of those guys around. But two is, and I worry, because where we teach a lot of times, we spoon feed the kids a lot of times. And they ask me, they go, why well, did the exercise, but what did I learn? Right. Sometimes we make the exercise so easy, they don't really learn what they need to learn. Mm -hmm. So I always tell students, OK, let's stay after class. Let's do some scenarios so we can make sure you know what you need to know or learn what you need to learn. Right. So that's part of that, too. But. Yeah, that, that, a lot of that has to do with like if you have a really good professor, too, like sometimes um, some professors are extremely boring. And you don't oh, yeah. learn anything from them. So that's the issue, too. You don't, you don't retain information. And the other thing is that um, a lot of people, they do um, uh, like exam crams, like they cram the yeah. exam questions and they memorize the answers and everything. And then they go take the exam. They get certified, but they don't understand what they're actually doing. I see that a lot. I see. I actually see that a lot. I see that with a lot of people asking me questions. I'm like, but you CISP certified. But two is a lot of times depending on the the uh, certification. Some of those are management uh, certifications. They really don't roll their hands. I'm going to actually touch a computer. So it depends on the certification. Yeah, exactly. So I was going to ask you another question. So what about, what about, I guess, going back, going back to like starting your, how to start in IT? What about, what about your resume? What about LinkedIn? What about job recruiters? What about applying for jobs? What do you think about all that? I think you need to master all that. I, I'm just lucky because I've been in it so long. I haven't interviewed in the last 20 years. People invite me to come work for them. But no, and today's thing, you have to get all of those down. Your resume has to be tight. You need to get on LinkedIn. You really need to get on all the social medias because it's weird now on LinkedIn. My uh, resume is not full out, but I get a job offer probably every month. Two is be careful. Some of those recruiters out there are just body shops. They really don't care about you. They're going to put you in a job you're not qualified for and get you fired. So you got to make sure you interview those guys. Because remember, you don't work for those guys. Those guys work for you. Even though they got the job, you need to make sure you trust that guy. I work with a couple of recruiters that if I need some, or they might send me a job and we'll talk about it, but make sure you control those guys. Those guys, those guys will make you fit your, your they make your resume fit for a job you're not qualified for, and you'll be out there stuck. So make sure you control those recruiters. Um, once again, I think you need to use all forms of that communication. Me at 50, I'm, I'm kind of a little rusty, but I am on LinkedIn. I'm on, I'm on Snapchat. Look, the only thing I put on Instagram is food, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but I think you need to use all of those because that's how, especially in um, today's, everybody communicates that way. And on LinkedIn, recruiters are looking for you. So if a recruiter reach out to me, I'm like, if you don't meet these salary requirements, don't bother me. Uh, this, this is not money I make. So I think you need to be on all of those because two is every time I freelance, which I don't do, do much anymore, Whoever I'm interviewing for freelance for, I can see my LinkedIn go up because they're looking at my LinkedIn and they're seeing the last jobs. They, so you need to put your projects your projects out there, what you're doing, and kind of build your resume on top of LinkedIn too versus your electronic resume because people are definitely going to look at it. Yeah, that's, a, that's the other thing too I was going to say, not to cut you out, but I said like no. some people confuse, like they put their resume and they think it's the same Resume is not the same as LinkedIn profile. These are two no. separate things. They try to put right. everything together. I mean, you can't no, do that. No, no, no. I put projects out there. Like you said, a high level. And the other thing, too, is um, I'm in the Midwest, which is small. So when people look for me, they're going to know somebody on my friends list and they're going to call. Them. So if, you, if that person thinks you're good, they're going to recommend you. And usually they're going to reach out to you and be like, hey, this guy called me about you. So I talked to you. So depending on your, so most of the people on my LinkedIn, I would say, 80% of them, I've worked with them before. I just don't randomly accept anybody. So I'm trying to figure out how to balance that. Now it's like, now I wish my LinkedIn was bigger because I could put my uh, my YouTube videos on there to help. <laughs> so you got to balance that because they are going to reach out to people that work with you before from your LinkedIn to kind of figure out, do a little background check. And if those two people are cool, they're going to tell the truth about you if you're not good. Like I had a guy reach out to me. I told him I wouldn't hire that dude. I, I would never hire that dude. Man, he don't know what he's doing. So, so that's one thing. Uh, the industry is small, especially when you get up to federal compliance, big database. I mean, you know, that once you get in Cisco on some of those top products, uh, it's, it's a small world. Man. Oh, everyone knows each other. 
It's very yeah. important. It's just, and that's the other thing is like very like don't burn your bridges with managers. Oh my god, never. Never. Them. never. Even though you want to punch them in the face, don't do it. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> As my mom would say, I ain't real, real. I'm not real religious. Pray on it. That's all I got. That's what she would tell me. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta it, have it, patience. It's small. It's small, man. Especially mm-hmm. if you're a minority out here. It's tiny, 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 tiny. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have. It's, it's one of those. It's one, it's one of those things I tell people like. Um, don't you better, uh, and then it's going to sound bad for me, but I tell people like, you don't, just be quiet and shut up and don't say anything. Oh, just do your job. You know, th- that's perfect, man. A lot of people don't want to do that because in the cancel culture, you not want to do that, but sometimes you just need to shh, let it go. Shh. Yeah. And just swallow your, swallow your pride and do what you have to do and then get the job done. Are you like this David Shep, David Chappelle? We're keeping it will can go wrong. I've seen it happen in real life. Sometimes don't get real. Just let it go, man. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you another question. So, so you talked about help desk. So for someone that has been in help desk, what do you, what do you think they should be in help desk? How long should they be there before they start looking for another job for like a sys admin or something like that, or network admin? Um, kind of depends on a person, but I will at least say, at least do six months, if not a year. Cause two is depending on, I did help desk at a large company. You get to see everything. And two is, as you well know, there's tier one, two, and three. So, I mean, once you get to tier two and three, a lot of times those guys have specialties to a tier three. You're like, I'm the specialist of tier three doing this, right? This guy's the active directory tier three guy. Now he can do a lot of stuff, but you know the guy, I need to get to this guy because he's tier three. Because as a um, manager of some things, I know who I need to get to in tier three to get something done. Because depending on the company, a lot of times tier one guys, they're really learning, they don't know. So I start, I get cool with the tier three guys because I need something done ASAP. So I'm buying guys lunch in tier three because I'm going straight to him. People get mad. You can go put it to him. I'm like, dude, I need his done. I got that guy's number. He going to help me. I put the paperwork in later. So depending on if you tier one, two, or three, especially if you get to three, it's going to take you a year to get to three at least. So I, I would say at least do a year. That's 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 the thing too. Like I I, I talk about that. And I talk about that like outside of YouTube. Like you have to build a relationship with your team, oh, team yeah. members, because then you know the right people. He's like, can you do me a favor, oh. Simon? Can you, you know, like, can you fix that for me real quick? You know, oh, yeah. just like, you do favors. People hire me just seriously because I got good relationship. I skip a lot of people going to the back office, man. I buy a lot of lunches because if you were in a big area and something goes down, sometimes they want to send you that. If you can get to the tier three guy, cut it out. You know, you can get something done in 10 minutes where if you got to go through all the tiers, that could be an hour. So you got to know those guys. And I treat those guys well because I'm going to need a favor. And when I need a favor, I need it because somebody's on my ass. So I need a favor, favor. So <laughs> you do need to know those guys. So don't, don't sleep on a help desk. Treat the help desk nicely. I know you think all oh, those guys don't know nothing. All those guys are low level. You're going to need those guys sometime because I don't have admin rights to that stuff. I, some of the stuff I can't get to, even though I know how to do it, I don't have access to those. So I gotta go through the I gotta go through the process. Mm-hmm. So. I, I I speak about that all the time. Like, be nice to your your help desk team because you never know when you need them. Especially especially help desk. Like, they go underneath the floor. They do PC oh. moves. They set up monitors. They do PC installations. They do software installation. All that stuff is done in help desk, and you gotta respect them for doing that. You know, like not not everyone goes underneath the desk like that. You know. Yeah, people so. don't realize too. Is like I said, sometimes you need some and management's looking at you. They don't know. They don't understand. You got to put these tickets in. They just want it done now. So if you get cool with a guy and buy him lunch and just, you know, he can kind of at least not put you at the end, but put you in the middle of the queue. That That's a, that's a lot, man. <laughs> that weighs a lot. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta like respect everyone, no matter who it is. Like I teach that too. Like, and I, I teach in IT because you know, I teach people. Well, I don't know if you know, I teach people outside of IT. Okay. I, I have my own mentorship. So okay. Um, I teach people in IT that if you're doing a help desk or sys- no matter what position you are, wherever where you at, um, doesn't matter if you're a janitor. I tell people to treat people with respect. Doesn't matter that. if you're help help desk or anything. I treat like, treat everyone the same because you never know when you need them. So you better be okay with everyone. And you and I promise, if you especially if you anywhere near um, programming, IT or security, we don't have the passwords to the back end stuff. So even if we know how to do it. You got to go through those guys. So you're going to need them, especially like I'm kind of in the middle management role between the managers and the tech guys. So I need those guys because I'm getting yelled at. So I'm like, man, I need you to do this. Can you help me? And a lot of times they will. Because sometimes they might ask me for us. 
they, they're in an otter or something, they get beat up. So they ask me some questions. So I always try to help people because I'm going to need a favor. I'm going to need a favor. So I try to build my favors up in this industry because you will need them. Mm-hmm. And then somebody was asking a question. I'm looking at a question. Someone was asking, like, what's the work-life balance for cybersecurity? Is it okay or is it messed up or is it okay? It just depends on the industry. I'm at a certain level now where my balance is great because I dictate a lot. You know, I'm kind of like a SME, so I dictate to the data, the DBA. I need you to do these checks. I need you to get back with me. I need I dictate to the compliance manager. She says I need this. I'll get it. So look, work balance, work life balance for me is, is pretty good. Cybersecurity is pretty good. The only time it really gets crazy is, which has been a lot, ransomware attacks where you're actually getting hacked and you're trying to track that down. The rest of the time of that is security delegating to another area. We need something done. Like I said, the database guys, we need these checks run. Uh, the Active Directory, we need you to scan Active Directory so we can see the vulnerabilities, so we can see what we need to close. So now work-life balance usually for Cybersecurity is great unless we're doing an audit or unless we're being attacked. It's pretty good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you another question because I know you've been in the IT field for a literally long time. Mm-hmm. So what what is your advice? And I'm gonna get, I'm asking because everyone's watching right now and everyone that's watching. Typically, the people that, that watch my videos are help desk people, right? Okay. So what's your advice? Because because I know you're a professor and you do cybersecurity. Yeah. So what is your advice for someone that already has a job and help desk? Mm-hmm. What should they be doing to land a job in cybersecurity? Should they do SOC analysts or should they do something else? What is your advice for someone that's trying to get into cybersecurity? If they have job experience already, and help I, us. I've heard you say that it depends on what you like. So if you want to be a SOC analyst, right? Two is I would do something in the middle before I jump to cybersecurity. So if I'm a SOC analyst, I might work on Active Directory or maybe an SA. Why would I want to do that? Because you need to understand how to look at logs for that particular product. You need to figure out how to harden that particular product. I call it sticks, right? So you need to understand that particular product inside and out. Because when you go to cybersecurity, unless you're on incident response, you're overseeing those departments on how they harden it, right? How do you lock down? You've seen the RDP. I had sticks at the end. Mm-hmm. What checks do you put in RDP to make sure it doesn't get hacked? If you've never done RDP, how, <laughs> you don't even understand what that is at a high level. So I would tell people when you leave help desk, Go be a DBA, SA, programmer. Do that for a couple of years, then go to cybersecurity. Because now we go to cybersecurity, you can say, I have a specialty. I'm a programmer, so I can help you with all the programming stuff. I was a sysadmin. Shout out to Keep It Techie. I know Linux. I can lock it down. Windows admin. I lab every day. I understand the Cisco routers, right? So I would tell people to do another step. And then people complain, oh, I just want to go to cybersecurity. What's your specialty, and why should I pay you the money you're asking for? So when I go to cybersecurity, if I understand Active Directory in and out, I can say, that's why you need to pay me this amount because I understand this inside and out. So the only thing I got to learn is a little cybersecurity. I don't need to learn the product, right? Because when people don't realize, when you do cybersecurity, you're locking down to figure out what's been hacked. Or even if you hack an Active Directory as a red team, you got to understand a product to hack it. If you don't understand the configs, the logs, what ports are open, uh, the admin console number, how do you lock it? How do how are you gonna do pen testing on that? So for me, I think there's a step in the middle before you go to before you go to security team. And what what's your what's your uh okay for you, like can you explain in a non-technical way yeah. what is a red team, what is a blue team, and what yeah. is a purple team? Yeah, I can too. Red team in the top in a non-technical way is I'm the hacker, I'm trying to get into your system, I'm trying to break in there. How to do that? There's Technical is the way to do it, but the long story short is red team. I'm trying to break in your system, steal your identity, steal your money, steal your tax return, figure out who your side chick is. So I'm trying to break in your system and figure it out. Blue team, I'm the opposite. I'm trying to lock it down so the red team don't get in. So I'm doing these checks to secure that device. Because a lot of people nowadays, if you're talking about Windows, especially Windows, when they install it, they just do next, 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 next. And they think they have a star. You haven't locked it down. You haven't MFA'd it. So basically, blue team is locked up. Purple team is the programming part of that, the application part of that. You're trying to lock the, specifically the application down. So when I say blue team, I'm talking about I'm talking locking down everything: browser, database, web server, app server, Cisco router. So blue teaming, that's the entire thing. 
Purple team is I'm really focusing on the application layer, right? I did C sharp, I'm going through a database and just that small little part of the application. That's and my what, non-technical view. Did that sound all right? No, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I, it, it does, definitely helps everyone that's watching. Um, what, 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 what certifications do you recommend for someone in help desk going into cybersecurity besides the labs and everything else? Um, I would start off with, like I said, Security Plus, then depending on which part of that, like we said, if you're going to do Red Team, there's an ethical hacker, there's some OSCP stuff. Um, if you're going into um, Cisco's got certifications, um, depending on what part you want to go into, there's a certification tree and track for anything you want to do. You just got to figure out the area you want to focus on. What do you think of, of CCNA and Pentest and there's some CompTIA certifications like, Pen, like oh, Pentest Plus? Oh, that's good. And I would definitely, uh, I tell my students after help desk, I would do networking because that has the most jobs, to be honest. And there's always a nice shift for networking because if networking go down, they almost on 24 seven. So I said, if you confuse going to network, you got, it's got the most jobs. And even I struggle that the basis of cybersecurity is networking. Because if you, if you got a three tier or high network traffic or how you get it, most of that's based on actually attacking the network if you're on a red team and secured on blue team. So I de definitely tell people, uh, get in the networking plus. And if you're going to go, go Cisco. They make the money. They eat well. Shout out to Dewan. He looked like he living well. Um, so get that Cisco <laughs> Duane, yeah. money. Get that Cisco mm -hmm. money if you're going to get anything. That's the 800-pound gorilla. Those guys eat well. Shout out to them guys. Shout out to <laughs> Kiki. Shout out to Dewan. Like, <laughs> Kiki, yeah, like so, you too, actually. Yeah. So yeah, so I, yeah, I tell those guys, networking. If you're confused and you don't know, I'll start with networking because that's really the basis of everything. Mm -hmm. So, and I was going to ask you another question. What about what about someone in help desk? Um, uh, try hack me and hack the box. So I, I, usually, the, you know, hack the box is like really yeah. talked about. What do you think yeah. about that? Um, that's some I, that's red team stuff. Everybody loves to hack the box. That's the sexiest thing in there. Uh, for me though, I, I always just get. I think we make hacking too sexy. Blue team, I'm really <laughs> love. All the movies are made about hackers. Nobody talk about blue team, let's lock it down. So I was talking to uh, cyber, a cyber center person. She's always talking about, let's make uh, the stick sexy, sexy. That's the blue team. So I'm trying to show the blue team. Um, I'm cool with that. Um, I just think cybersecurity is so much broad. There's so many other things. Um, just switch it up real quick. Uh, I work for a compliance manager. She's not technical at all, but Everybody, she's got to do all the audits. She makes six figures and she just bosses everybody around. She does the compliance piece. But no, hack the box good. I just think we make a hack it too sexy, man. We need to switch it up. That's my, that's my <laughs> only beat with it. But no, if you want to go that route, I don't have I don't have a problem with it. And uh, pen testing, ethical hackers. Uh, my only issue with those is, which is not a big issue, is most companies don't have those guys on site. They usually hire a company to do that. We do that three times a year and we actually hire a company. I worked in the government. We don't have those guys on site. We actually um, out, we actually outsource that. So I don't think there's a lot of jobs out there. If you look for the job paradigm, there's going to be more blue team people because those are the regular people that's on staff, that's building it, that's making sure it's locked down. I don't know. I don't know any company that has ethical hackers on on staff. Hmm. And what are your, what are your, what about what about um... Those people that 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 watch those Mr. Robot movies like uh, <laughs> Kali Linux, what do you thought? What's your thoughts on that? Oh, Ka <laughs> shout out to Kali Linux. I actually <laughs> teach that in class. Um, the good part about Kali Linux, you can download, easy to learn, you can test anything. The bad part about it is 90% of the people on my job I see trying to hack it is just hitting a button on Kali Linux. They're script kiddies. They just hitting a button, and we just start seeing these attacks on servers. Then we say, okay. He's doing a Linux attack on a Windows server. That dude don't know what he's doing. So, so they're using Kali Linux because it's easy, mm -hmm. right? You can make a honeycomb. You can attack wireless. You can do denial of service. So, I mean, so I mean, it's good and bad. Like I said, I teach that in class. It's got Wireshark. It's got anything and everything on it. It's, it's definitely a, a, a lovely learning system. But people are actually using that out there in the real world to attack companies, though, man, because it's so easy. Yeah, I was I was looking at the I was looking at I was looking at the Linux commands. And I saw one. I was like, like it's called like Sherlock or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And basically, it tells you information about the person's first and last name, and it gives you a bunch of information about their name and where they're from, what videos they have, all this information. It tells you about them in Sherlock. And I was like, oh, interesting. 
Right. I don't know. You, you could do that. You hit a button, like I said. So now everybody, that's why hacking so cool because you just hit a button and now you you think you missed the robot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like I said, now because at work I'm like, why is that dude doing uh, Windows attack on a Linux box? That's not gonna work. But then I was like, okay, we don't have anything to worry about because he we call that a script kitty. He's just hitting a button. He really don't know what's going on on the back end. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing is people want to do that and they don't understand how that whole thing works. They just want to do that. That's the other. That's the issue I have with people in IT trying to hack, and they watch a they watch a TV show and they think it's like you know it's like oh I know how to hack now you know. But the problem <laughs> is though is I talk to a lot of FBI. FBI's are actually going out on a lot of local calls now because it's getting crazy out there. So if they do something, they do something. Look, they hit the wrong button. They could be getting business from guys in black suits for real. Mm-hmm. So depending on what system you hit. Yeah, someone someone was actually asking about. You already answered certification. Someone was asking about uh, cybersecurity, a stressful job? Uh, yes, very stressful. I'm not, I ain't going to say very stressful. You're going to have probably six or seven moments in a year that if you're not good, it could really drive you crazy. But the sad part, no, not sad, is I've been doing this so long, like we talked about. I'd say get with this guy on the back end, get with this guy on the help desk, put those two guys together. Because really... When we get hacked, we got to get the laws, we got to trace the IPs and all that. So it's just really keeping calm and getting your resources together. So the, it's, it's a division called incident response. Long story short, it's incident response. You actually practice those uh, drills. So when it happens in real life, you practice it. So, but yeah, it could be stressful. If you think somebody stole your whole database, and I was at a company where we thought somebody stole the whole database. And, mm-hmm. and if you are a hospital and you lose every record, and you uh, consider negligent, it's a thousand twenty-four dollars a record. So wow. if you got so if you got a million records, that's a billion one uh, you're responsible for. So that's when it gets stressful because we always joke that if we got hacked, we know we're gonna get fired. So we just gonna go golf that day. Um, but so that's what you gotta think about it. So if you HIPAA or you a big OSHA, if you consider it negligent, it's like a thousand dollars record. You can easily hit a billion dollars because we all know you're gonna get a hundred dollar credit. My, hundred dollars worth of credit monitoring so if you got a million do- million records and they a hundred dollars a record for credit monitoring you're already a hundred million dollars and you haven't fixed anything you haven't even started wow uh someone said what was the most challenging thing for him to learn through the cybersecurity career um the ch- most challenging um for me because i'm old it's just going through the next generation like i was a uh, relational database programmer and I had to go to object oriented. That's really not cybersecurity, but when you do those jumps, because relational, I used to tease the mainframe guys when I did that. I was like, oh, y'all old guys don't know nothing, but now I'm the old guy. So so now it's not stressful. Well, me trying to learn the cloud, right? That's a different skill set when you're in the cloud. Right? Um, it's a shared responsibility. I don't control the servers, Amazon does. So how does that work from a security perspective? Right, so those are the challenges now. So everybody know cloud is it, cloud is the next thing. I always tell people I'm working on my AWS cloud associate architect, because I need another 10 year run. I'm in my 50s, I need to get my 60s. So the cloud's gonna be my next run. So I would say it's stressful, but just kind of relearning what I know on-prem and make that work for the cloud, right? So I wouldn't say stressful, it's, it's a challenge because each decade you get older, it's a little harder to learn. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I agree uh, with that. So now mm-hmm. I'm in my 50s. I'm going in my 60s, man. I don't retain information like I used to. Yeah. yeah. Some stuff you look at, you go, why would they do that? That don't even seem realistic. You know, there's just so many things in the cloud. I just never thought coming from client server that what I would ever see. Like, you know, a petabyte of data. Amazon does that probably every week. You know, that's not mm-hmm. a but then that's not in the old days, you can put that on a whole disk farm, right? So the amount of data you can do in the cloud or even small startups. I mean, Snapchat was a smart startup. They probably had a petabyte of data, man, with pictures. So just the, the level of volume and the data you have to work with is a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, someone says, are there sac- sanctions in using Sheldon? I don't know what that is. I have no idea what I don't that know is. What that is. I've heard of it. I don't know what sanctions. Using Sheldon. Uh, someone's asking if you have a if your company gets hacked, are you then blackmarked from the industry as an employee? 
No, I've seen actually it could work in reverse for you. Uh, the reason why is um, if you actually go through the incident response of that happening, you know the process. So like long so if you work for a big government agency and you get hacked, you might have to report to the state general attorney. You might have to report to HIPAA, which is health and hospital. Uh, you got to go through the fine. You got to probably go to outside vendor like Mandy to come and actually find those, how you got hacked. So you're working with a third party because let's take the big one. You don't know how to track down a nation state level hack. Well, you don't have the expertise. So you got to work with a third party vendor. So you work with Mandy and AWS together to figure out how to fix that. So once you get that knowledge, that knowledge is um, knowledge is key and that's how you get paid. So even though you got hacked, you went through that process, you know how it works. So you, you, you won't panic, you go, okay, I gotta, I gotta reach out to the state general attorney. Uh, we know if we're in California, that's GDPR. So I know I gotta do the GDPR. I know if I'm a hospital, I gotta report to health and hospital. So now you know what the whole process is. So even though you got hacked, as long as you went in the CISO or high level, you can, in your next interview, you go, I was hacked. I wasn't responsible, but I know what the process is. Like I said, I know it's a state general attorney. I know it's health, health and hospital. I know I got to do this. I know we had to go through this regulation. So now your interview, you, that's something you learn. You can, most companies don't know that process because they never think they're going to be hacked. So I know I, you can make it actually a, a positive. As long as you're not a high level executive, <laughs> you, you can you turn that into a positive. Someone was asking, uh, what softwares do they use in cybersecurity? I was going to ask you about that. So I was going to ask you about, um, do you use Zscaler or do you use, um, um, what, what programs are you using in cybersecurity? He's asking any specific Linux distributions? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I always talk about a couple of jobs. Since I do federal level, we usually use Red Hat. Uh, Ubuntu just actually got cleared by the government. So usually if you work at, because I do federal level, so I usually do stuff that they have sticks for, and the government approves um, any distribution you use should uh, actually went through government verification. So I, I'm usually a Red Hat guy. Ubuntu just got um, just passed certification. And two, if you go to AWS, I just start seeing Ubuntu saying, yeah, we're government certified. We FIPS 140-2. They start naming off all these government compliance certifications uh asking about so do you do you do um do you do like it was gonna sound very random because mm -hmm. i do this a lot in my job too by the way oh, so do you random. do you do um do you do fake emails like i, I do that yeah yeah we don't we, we we uh outsource that so when that happens we go out we call it a uh the government says you got to do a test uh once every uh, 18 months. So that's one of our tests we do. We do a phishing email test and we try to make it uh, complicated. Uh, two years ago, before I came to my current job, is the sad thing is if we would send out a, a phishing email with Target on it with 30% off, we would get a high click rate. <laughs> so, now we put, Amazon, if you send out some Amazon, you're going to get a high click rate. Amazon with a discount, high click rate. Because you got to remember is, and I talked to my boss, he was very upset. I go, why are you upset, boss? We don't pay people well, so if you're going to give them 50% off, they're going to click on that coupon, man. We got to do a better job training, man, so. Yeah, that was, that was the issue with me. Is I sent an email for um for a, a, a Starbucks coffee, oh, yeah. like a $50 gift card. Everyone clicked on it. And I'm like, why are you guys clicking on it? And then they got, they got like an email like to take the course. So like, why do I have to take this course? Because you clicked on this. All right. The sad part about it, though, we would do the course a week ahead of time, and they still would click on the email. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just like, that's training. I, they, you know, that's training, and and there's a certain part of a company community that doesn't make money, so they really just trying to do their job and go home. So you gotta, you know, coerce them to take security serious. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna ask you another question. Before I get to all more questions here, um, what 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 um I guess since going back into cloud, what what uh what cloud applications are you using for security? Because I know you're 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 trying to adjust to the cloud systems, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just talking generically. If, and I'm an AWS guy. Their standard setups pretty. If you you know, like we talked about networking, so that's in the cloud is VPC. How do you set up your network? What tiers can talk to other tiers? And two is the cool thing is Amazon, they do their stuff cheap. They got a web application firewall. I think it's three cents an hour. 
Then they got their own auditing uh, sim set up. I think it's called CloudWatch. That's like zero. So they give you all the tools. So if you use their base tools, um, you're gonna you're gonna be at a much uh, higher level security than you trying to do it yourself because they have all the components out there. So usually you do a VPC, CloudWatch. Then I try to put stigs on each one of those uh, environments. Like if you spin up Linux, right? Because you're spinning up VMs of the OS, right? Now we're talking about purple. How are you locking down those the applications of that, right? OWASP top 20, uh, cross-site script is SQL injection, right? How do you lock down that, that section? Right, so you go through each one of those layers. The cool thing is they have those layers out there. And if and two is you can actually say NIST, which is a government um, compliance, it'll actually spin up your networking environment to comply with that. It'll give you a three-tier network, it, your application, Application VLAN can only talk to your web VLAN and your app can only talk to your database. So it spins it up, pre-set up for you. That's pretty cool, man. I'm just I'm, I'm just looking at the questions. I'm like, I'm listening to you, but I'm listening to the questions. It's like I'm <laughs> multitasking over here. I see you working. I see you working. I'm, yeah. I'm working on that. You my role model. I struggle with that too. No, 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 I ain't no role model. <laughs> no. Um, let's see. Does he believe in cybersecurity will be replaced by AI? I think AI will help. And I think um, it's like anything. I think AI is going to take care of some of the low hanging fruit or some the stuff so complicated you cannot you can you're not doing that anyway. So if you're talking about solar winds and you're talking about ACK and SEC and uh, Cisco type uh, hacks, you can't look at those manually. It's like a million rows a second are coming through your network. So AI is going to do that for you because you're not you you can't do that anyway manually. So a lot of the manual stuff, I think AI is gonna is gonna take over. You're gonna need AI to help you. Cause you can't look at 10 million rows in a second if you're Amazon, because they got like 4,000 web servers around the world. You cannot look through those logs manually, right? So that's the stuff AI is gonna help you with. But no, AI is, is gonna take a piece of it away, but I don't think it's gonna take all of it away. No, it's like it's like uh it's like automation with PowerShell. Like if you yeah. if you're really good with PowerShell, like oh. you, you you don't even gotta do anything in your job, you just click on the button. Right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That is true. And automation is the, the not the next big thing. I think it is the thing because especially if you got any uh size of a company, because you can't handle 300 uh BMs, 400 BMs. you gotta automate that stuff. You, 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 it's just it's just so much stress like imagine you handling so many so many yeah. devices at the same time and you don't do automation at all it's just all right. very very stressful so i so i think i think it's going to be less people in some of those areas but i think those people will be doing a different thing like the automation thing they're not going to be doing spinning up stuff manually so if we talk about automation as a whole i think it will be less networking people i think it'll be less cybersecurity people you be managing the automation. You be managing your compliance and who you report to. It just be a, a different version of that. Makes sense. Someone was asking, are you using any pre-made tools or automation tools like Ansible to apply those things, or do you use? Do you have your own? Um, I'll, I'm not gonna say which one, but we have looked at Ansible. Chef and Puppet is real big in automation on the back end. So those three forms of automation. I'm actually uh, reading a little bit about Chef myself. So those are, we definitely do automation for that. Because like you said, is when we spin up VMs, we're not going to manually stick them. So as you spin up your VM, it's going to have those sticks or those checks on there for you already as part of the automation. Yeah, I've seen people use uh, Chef as, as salt, salt, something called salt. I think I've seen that. Chef, yeah, and Puff, salt. Chef and Puff and Ansible seems to be the big dogs in that mm -hmm. area. So those, those are the ones uh, like I try to focus on and learn because as a security person, I got to make sure they're not higher coding passwords in there. I got to make sure they're using tokens. So from a security perspective, and I'm an analyst, I ask people, can I see your scripts? Because if I see any passwords hard coded, then I'm going to have to come see you. That's what we say. I'm going to have to pull up on you because you're not doing secure coding. So that's what I mean as a security person. You got to understand the totality of it. So I might not understand a chef script, but I can look in and see if there's a password in there. Or I usually ask the programmer and I usually drop their head. I go, uh, we need to at least encrypt those or change those to keys, young man. Let's make it happen. Let's get it. So, Shout out to uh, Keep It Techie. I see you on chat. And he says, shout out to you, Professor Black Ops. Shout out to Keep It Techie. Um, he said, oh, we have. Uh, what programming languages are most useful to know? Is Python enough? Uh, Python, <laughs> Python's 
I thought it's not enough, but if we talk about automation and the scripts, a lot of those automation scripts called Python scripts. So I think you need to understand it. You might not need to be an expert because once again is you need to be able, you need to have automation scripts that are go to Python and look for passwords to make sure they're in there, right? Because I've seen a lot, I look at a lot of Python and I see a lot of passwords hard coded in Python because it's easier when you test it. Oh, I just put the password in there. But like, yeah, when a hacker get in there, they can see the password. It's not good. So, but yeah, that's a good start. Line. Uh, I would, like I said, uh, Python, Chef and Puppet had theirs. I'm a Java guy. I'm, I've done Java for years. I'm an old Linux guy, so I'm a uh, Corn Shell guy. A lot of people do Bash, but I, I've been doing Corn Shell, oh my God, about 20 years on Linux. Mm -hmm. So like I said, if you were in uh, cybersecurity, you got to understand all that at a high level. Like I said, the basic thing is, are we looking at passwords? Are we locking down uh, variables? Can somebody get in there and do SQL injection? If you don't do your call, if you don't do your coding right, it's called the OWASP top 20. People can do those attacks to because you didn't code your code right. Yeah, he was, he was asking that question because he like a follow-up question with help desk. Mm -hmm. what, what would help you? What would help you to prepare for cybersecurity after doing help desk? And I think you answered that question already. I did. Depends I, what you want to do, you know. Yeah, I, I would go to uh, networking if you're lost, network has the most team. Because when you go to cybersecurity, I tell people it's nice to have a specialty. Because if you're talking about making big money, just come to cybersecurity and you don't know anything, why should I pay you that? If you come to cybersecurity, it says, I understand automation. I can code. I understand network. Let me do all the Cisco checks. Because I'm uh, I'm about to do a video where Cisco uh, F5 just got hacked. So there's like 20 checks for the F5 uh, Cisco router. So if you can say, I, let me verify these checks to make sure we don't get hacked and I understand it inside and out, then I can pay you big money. Right. So well, I think there's an intermediate step, like I said, from help desk to programming, help desk to networking, uh, help desk to keep it taking DBA or, or, or SA work. Then I think you should go to the security team. That makes sense. And what what's your um, I was going to ask you, what what's a, is going to be really random? I know you've done management and a couple of different things. So what what's your what's a what's a common interview question in cybersecurity? I know this is I don't know this is really random. That's no, that's not random. what I like to know. My thing is which is random is I ask people, what is the weakest thing? What is your, what part of cybersecurity are you weakest at? Then a lot of people stutter because they don't, they don't know how to answer that, right? So, cause that, cause people like talking, so where do you weak at? Then two is where do you see yourself in five years? Mm -hmm. One guy interviewed he, me, he said, I, I want to see myself as a CISO. I was like, Ooh, that's a big job, man. That's, <laughs> you want to be the chief information security officer? So you just ask where you want to be in five years and what's the weakest part of your cyber? Because then that tells me is what I need to help you at, get better at, and where should I not put you at first, right? Mm -hmm. If you're weak at networking, I don't know. I say, oh, go help the Cisco guys. And you don't understand what a route is. You don't understand what a VPN is. I mean, I'm sorry, VPC if we're in the cloud. You don't understand CIDR and CIDR blocks and how to do that. I shouldn't put you in networking, right? I need I can put you in database. Keep it tech, you can watch you, right? So mm -hmm. those are the questions I ask for management. I don't like management because me and millennials don't get along because I'm old school, so I don't manage people anymore. Got it. Someone was asking, does he have any plans for his career for his for his career this decade, or is he happy with his current position? I like we talked about. My plan is like we talked about every 10 years there's a seismic shift. So I got to get on the cloud because I think if you're missing in the cloud in the next five years, you, you're going to be the Blackberry of this industry. So every 10 years I figure out, so my my big thing now is to master AWS, uh, understand each component, even if it's at a high level, be able to architect something that I feel real good at. Architect something I know can pass government level compliance. Well, my big thing is the cloud. And what what's your what's your what what's your thought? AWS, Azure, or both? Uh, I would say both at a high level. But like I was telling them, the money I make, I need to focus on some. So I'm focusing on AWS. And then what what's your? Because we talked about the cloud and everything. So what mm -hmm. what is um? I was gonna ask you, what what's your what's your thought process on on people and and help desk? Should they learn about automation? Most definitely. Uh, my thing is you should be learning. You should be learning for your next job. So once again, if you want to do automation, you want to be DBA, SA. So while you're in your current job, you need to be getting ready for your next job. 
people don't give out jobs. You gotta have some kind of understanding of what you want to do in that job. Even if, if it's easier to go to your company and say, I'm gonna help this. I, I got this um, Linux certification. I feel comfortable with it. Can, can I move to that department? Most people are like, oh yeah, you, you know, you're doing pretty good on help desk. Um, I think you're ready. You know, you stay your year and then you can transfer. But if you got a governor and say, yeah, you got to train me, I don't understand nothing, then why should I hire you, right? But if you say, I got this certification, I've been reading, I've been learning, I've been labbing every day, you know, then it's hard to tell you no, because you're ready. And two is, as you well know, is half your job is understanding the culture you're in, how you put in tickets, how do you communicate, what levels, what products you use, even at help desk, you're going to know those because you if you don't, if you're not using them, you don't hurt them because you know you using those the three the three tier guys are using those in the back end at least. Mm -hmm. So you know what products they got. So once you take that next level, it's easy to transfer too because people know you. And what what's your what's your thought on? I had it in my head. Now it came in my head. What's your thought on uh uh, certif uh Splunk certifications? Oh, Splunk is the eight hundred pound. Only thought of my beef with Splunk is, and we actually looked at it is expensive as hell. Mm -hmm. But if you learn it, you, you can write your, yeah, those guys, I do a little Splunk. It's just, it's just, no, Splunk is good. Sim, Sim is good. Like I said, um, the only thing about Splunk is, especially in your area, I would go to Dice or Indeed and just put in Splunk. Splunk is pricey. So if you're using Splunk, you ain't working at a small company. You're working at a major, probably Fortune 1000 company. Mm -hmm. Cause I saw the price on Splunk cause they charge you for how much data you ingest. I was like, Ooh, that's a big boy bill. That's a big boy bill. <laughs> now Splunk, you just gotta make sure those companies in your area, you gotta make sure too is, and I tell my students, you, you can't have any uh, credit problems. You gotta have a high credit score and you can't have none in your background because Splunk's gonna put you by the money, right? So those lives are gonna be coming in. Some of those lives gonna have SSN, bank accounts numbers in there. So they're going to do a background check. So if you need to clean that up, your credit score is in there too. So I just want to throw that out there. But now, um, like I said, my only issue with Splunk is it's pricey. So you need to make sure you got some big companies in your area or are you willing to move to the areas that have that use Splunk. I was going to ask you another question. There's another one, random question. What, what's your thought on SANS? The, the disc or the, the uh, certification? Yeah, the certification, the training and all that. I know it's expensive. What are, you, what are your thoughts on, on SANS? Oh, I like say is there's no complaint. Like you said, it's a little, it's a little pricey. Once again, since I work in the uh, government um, arena, they ask for a few SANS certifications. So, and that's one that I check the box. So, if you're talking mm -hmm. about CONTIA, SANS, th those are the big, the, the big dogs. CISP. So, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't. They're they're fine with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's like, is he is he able? He is. How is he able to work on a federal level in cybersecurity? Did it, did experience help the most? Um, <laughs> so I'm laughing because keep it tech, you know, uh, it depends on how you got in there. I actually worked for a consulting company. So since I was on a consulting company, I, my qualifications, they put me actually on a federal um, contract. I, I usually do consult work because uh, as a consultant, I get paid a lot more than if I was a federal employee. Got it. And then someone said, which is the best pathway for the blue team or red team for beginners in cybersecurity? Uh, it just depends. I'm a blue team guy. Um, it just, like you said, depends on what you want to do. Um, ethical and ethical hacking and penetration testing for the red team. My, my part on that, and, um, that's more of an alpha cybersecurity guy. I don't think there's a ton of jobs in that. If you go in indeed and put penetration testing, and you go in and put essay there's going to be probably a million essays job. I don't think they probably be maybe 10 or 20,000 pen, especially red team. Like I said, I don't know any company has those guys in the house. We usually uh, uh, just get a vendor to do that for us because we don't do it all the time. So that, that's my only issue with red team. Got it. Because I'm, I'm kind of chunky. I'm trying to eat. So I try to go to one with the most jobs. Shout out blue team. <laughs> Shout out blue team. <laughs> What what's the what's is there, are there any specific application software would you recommend people to get familiar with with preparing to cybersecurity related yeah, positions? I, yeah, they all actually in Cali, uh, Wireshark, um, some of the basic Linux stuff to look. Natstat A. When you do those jobs like managing a web server, you got to know Natstat A. Look at your ports. Look at your processes. That's just stuff you're gonna take to with take with you to cybersecurity. 
Uh, for me, I, I don't really focus on certain programs because if you're in there, like Splunk's going to be a certain thing if you're doing incident response to be able to look at logs. Um, there's a product called Snort, which is open source, which is the poor man version of that. So I, my thing is, as long as, like we talked about, as long as you got the basics and you understand a port, a log, how does it look? And especially, like I said, I understand Tom kind of Apache inside and out. So I don't care if the logs are Snort, uh, Splunk, whatever. Uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Elastic Search, I think is the new one. Mm -hmm. So Splunk, I know what the log looked at. I don't care what, what, what product is in. I need to understand what I'm looking at. So, I mean, so, so like I said, it, it, and if you Google it, just Google the top three or four and just pick one and learn it. Like I said, I try to stay, because in my job, since I'm out of federal, we use the big products. So when I'm labbing, I try to do the open source stuff. So when I work for a smaller company or I help a lot of smaller companies try to get federal certifications. So that's when I use stuff like Snort and a lot of the open source stuff. Uh, someone asked, does he have a Twitch or a LinkedIn? I know you have a YouTube channel. We're going to share that. Yeah, show. yeah. I'm too old for Twitch, man. I'm getting there. Tell me he's up on my old guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you... Um, how important, this is a random question, because I'm a- There's no I'm random a, question, stop saying that. All questions are good, nothing, <laughs> nothing random, man. I can roll with anything. So how how important in IT for cybersecurity, how important is people skills? Um, at the low level, I don't think they're very important because when I used to program, I never came out my queue, but as you go up the line, it becomes very important. Um, people's because especially soft skills, because when you when you interview, I think nowadays too, they want you to have a, a better personality. In the old days, I could stay on my cube and beat it. But you do help desk, so you got to talk to customers. You can't be pissing customers off, especially if one of them is the president. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you got to get your soft skill up. And two is my soft skills, a certain part of me is to have actually hurt me into going further. Like, I'm okay with emails, but when you get at a management level, your emails got to be tight mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and you got to communicate mm -hmm. very well. And I don't communicate it well. I call people. My boss know if he hit me two lines, I'm calling because I need to work on at my age communicating better with email. Because at the executive level, your emails got to be tight. Mm -hmm. So, and that's part of your soft skills. And that's part of even at my age, I'm working on. Because people keep asking me to go on management, but then I know I got to start emailing people. I got to start communicating a little better now. Right? I could just sit in my little tower now and be like, hey, I need you to do that. I do that. Send me that. But once you start communicating with management, soft skills is really. And the sad part about it, it's not sad, is depending who you are and how you communicate, you will get judged in meetings on that. And I'm in meetings a ton now. I, I probably spend... 20% of my time with lawyers, which always baffles me. Um, so, but yeah, the higher you get up, your soft skills. And I think mine are bad because I never practiced on them when I was younger. So uh, you got to get those soft skills. So definitely soft skills. Yeah, I'm asking that because like I, I, I work with people and then when you when you put an email a certain way, they see like a capital letter or something like that, they get really offended. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. And, and two is, and I had to learn that because I'm thinking it's just email. Why would people get fiery about it? I had this one guy, oh, he that his punctuation and diction was awesome. I'm like, that dude just made a mistake. He's bright, but now they're making assumptions on your intelligence by how you wrote an email. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, you smile and you know it. I mean, you know what that is. Until mm -hmm. I was in those meetings, I, I didn't take it that serious either. But when I was in meetings and I seen people making judgments on other people just because they're emails. And two is, and like I tell people is, depending on where you're from, your family could be kind of hood, so you don't get those soft skills and addiction. Because if they ain't speaking proper English, it's hard for your kids to speak proper English. So I tell people, you got to work on that, especially if you're talking about getting into management. Man. I mm -hmm. see, I had to jump on my colleagues because we cool. I'm like, stop judging that dude, man. He just made a punctuation error. But that, that's huge, especially, like I said. Man. And two, as you go up the ladder, uh, the jobs get smaller and the people get bigger. So they judge the people on minute things. Cause everybody's qualified for that spot. No, I, I agree with you. I'm the same way. I, I grew up in a, I grew up in a, in a, um, in a, in a bad area. So I got used <laughs> to talking a certain yeah. way uh -huh. because of that. And then I had to get rid of that, 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 that the way I talk kind of do, I had to like switch it up and I change. Cold switching, cold switching. That's why yeah. I got to get cold switch on. And two is 
I had to get my dress in order, man. I was an executive me. This young brother came in a purple suit. I had to pull his coat. I like, dude, everybody's wearing black and brown. People don't wear suits, but in the eighties, man, they people they judge you on that. Man. Mm-hmm. The cool mm-hmm. thing is now from home, they're not that bad. But you gotta have the uh, the appropriate attire and appropriate speech for the appropriate job or the job you're trying to get. And that, and when people are weighing you on that, it's the smallest thing could stop you from getting a promotion. Yeah, they 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 judge you on how you look. They judge you on yeah. how you move. They judge you your body language. They judge you on how yeah. you talk. They judge you on your emails. Everything. So, and one, and one thing I, I tell people is, and people used to tease me is, if people like you, people let a lot of stuff slide. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I used to help a lot of people on my team. Like, why are you over there helping that team? But when our contract ended, I had ten people trying to get me a job, and nobody offered them a job. I was like, I don't. I I like helping people, but I'm building up some stuff. I might need a favor, right? So mm-hmm. all of that, all that, all of that weighs in. All of that weighs in. So. Totally, totally agree with you. Uh, someone said that's working on a federal level mean he's getting attacked from, I guess, Russia or China. I don't know why he yes. thought that. But. Yes, Russia, China, Nigeria. But I, I got a network. I used to have a network home, and I was getting attacked by all those same people. The reason why is I asked a friend of mine. He was in the industry long. Ago, I said, dude, I got a lab. This is about 10 years ago. Somebody hacked my lab before I really got a cybersecurity good. I said, Dude, why they hack my lab? They go, you practicing? They practicing on you. You just can't go practice DOD, man. They got to practice on somebody. <laughs> so they practice and you practice. So what, what are what are some common attacks that you have seen in the pandemic? Oh, just uh, for me, I've just seen the standard ones. Um, we've been just kind of at the federal level, you're going to see everything from the solar winds attack to script kitty. So, I mean, we get scanned probably a million times a day because your IPs are public. I mean, any, any, so, so you're going to get scanned probably a, a million times a day. So we're just trying to figure out, okay, what does that mean? Scan, no problem. Somebody scanning a Linux box from Cali doing Linux commands, that's a problem. They understand I got, then now you say, okay, they understand the Linux box. They're attacking with, they're attacking the CVEs with the CVEs for the version we're using, right? Mm-hmm. So now so now that's when you start putting together how good are people, do they know what they're doing, right? Because part of your reconnaissance is, is, can you figure out what OS you're using? Can you figure out what version they're using? And if they're not patched, are you doing the proper attacks to, for, to attack that version? Right. So if you start seeing those three things, you're like, okay, this is serious. We need, we need to pay attention. Yeah, when I, when I saw that video that you made on RDP, I'm like, oh my God. I didn't know <laughs> that was common usernames and common passwords. It was, looking oh, like yeah. it. It was crazy, I, man. I appreciate that, man, because a lot of times you technical. I need to get my audience a little more technical because a lot of those, if you look, it had like 12 views. It hurts my feelings. Sometimes. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. I saw that video. Like, this is a really good video. It, I appreciate it. it. You're, still, you're still new on YouTube, but I am going to share your YouTube channel right no now for no. everyone. Oh, okay. I was going to say no rush. A, nope, nope. I'm going to share it right now. Give me a second. Let me move this over here. And um, let me know if you see your screen. Let me see if you see the screen. You see it? No, that's me. All right. So what are you about on your channel? i like to know more about you. Okay. My channel is, channel. I try to do, uh, I, t- I call it three stools. I try to do uh, daily cybersecurity news. What got hacked, who got hacked. Then the next level, that's what you're talking about. I call that Stigs and this box got hacked, this RDP got hacked. What happened? How did it happen? What checks do we need to put on to block it? Then the third part on there, which I, I'm going to start doing is from a society level, uh, the digital divide. What does privacy mean in Facebook? Right? Uh, facial recognition. What does that mean? Is that stepping on your privacy? There was a black guy in Detroit, facial recognition, <laughs> uh, sitting with some other guy, and he got arrested for a couple of days. Is that a step on your privacy? Should the police actually verify the facial recognition before they uh, locked you up? So I need to update that. <laughs> so I'm working on that. No, so no, that, it's so good. I, it's, yeah, everyone, so that's, everyone watching, subscribe to his channel, por favor, please. Follow him. We got some, some really good videos. So, so yeah, so... So yeah, I appreciate that. I'm going to do one on the F5 Cisco tonight, how attacking and how actually how to block it. So, so that's kind of my channel. And two is I want to be the OG. So if, 
if you if somebody don't show up and you need a guest real quick, you can reach out. Or if you come to me, it's like, uh, you talked about sticks. Do you got some sticks for Active Directory? I was like, yeah, I can send you over some sticks. Or, or we we get a federal check or federal audit. Can can you help me? Can you help me with some of the questions? I'm like, yeah. So that's my thing is uh, just reach out to uh, all the young people on uh, coming on great channels like this. So I can kind of get my experience and have people to ask me any questions or come on my channel asking questions and just. Just help the community, man, because I want a lot of people to, this is a great industry. It's not rocket science. I work with a lot of people. I work with biologists and physics and electrical engineers. Everybody doesn't have a computer science. I work with people with certs. And so, and it's a, you can make a ton of money if you get good at it. Don't be mm -hmm. scared of it. It's fast growing. It's ever changing. So I won't get, I won't get all people into this industry. And what what are your what where where did that name Professor Black Ops? I know you're a professor. Where did that name come from? <laughs> well, me and a guy, I, I was making a joke inside because there's very few minorities. So somebody asked, I said, I'm I'm black ops. My my job is to make securities locked down. Then I had this older white guy, he's a super duper architect. He a big dude. He, he kept saying, I'm white ops. <laughs> so we, we just kind of became this pair. There was just no black people in there. So me being who I am, I'm kind of crazy. I'm like, I'm black ops. I'm here to help you. I'm here to save you. I'm the cybersecurity ninja. <laughs> so I just came up with that name. Then I'm a professor. I was like, oh, I put the name together, man. I don't know. <laughs> so I just came up with that name. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a, that's a thing also in IT, which, which we don't really, um, we don't really talk about. Um, there's a lot of people in IT that, that don't teach IT in the in the Hispanic and oh. just the African community in general. There's not oh. really a lot of that, which is why a reason why I'm, I'm telling people to subscribe to you, because there's not really a lot of people that do that. Like, it's not common. Like, I like to see more. Um, I like to see more people in IT, like make YouTube channels, like like oh, yeah. from the African community, from the Hispanic community, yeah. all the minority communities. Oh, doesn't matter, okay. Asian, whatever. I don't care. I, I want to see more of that, like more IT communities, com, you know, uniting each other and helping oh, each other. But, but I I, 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 and you've been in this industry, man. I've been in a room with six hundred people, and that probably was. If you take out Indians, it probably was five minorities in a whole room, man. Yeah, it's usually it's usually like that. I don't understand why, but there are people not helping well, each other. I want to see more of that in the community in, in general as a whole, like. There's no unity over here with different people with different heritage, different backgrounds. That's the I issue agree. that I have with IT. With I people. agree. But I tell them, I tease them, especially the black community, we real big on relationships. I'm like, why are we talking about relationships, man? If you make some money, you can find a relationship. That's why I tell them, let's don't worry about the high value man or this guy. Let's just make some money, man. And it's, IT by itself is great. Cybersecurity is on another level. There's just so many ways in IT to make a very good salary. And, you know, you can start from search. You don't need a degree. We discussed that. And if you want to work at it and like, so you helping people, I help. There's just so many people out there. You can ask questions. And I just tell people, let's get the bag. man. Let's, it's just, it's just, it's just out there, man. So that's one reason I want to come on. And um, I saw keep it tech with some other guys. You know, I'm like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm old, but I can do it. <laughs> no, man, it's just, you're, you're good, man. Helping people. That's really important. I, the, the thing is like, like, I don't like, I don't agree in knowledge hordes that they hold their knowledge oh, yeah. and they don't teach any other one. They don't teach people when I don't like that. So that's the reason why like it messes me up when I see like, it, it bothers me a lot, like a lot. I'm like, why are you not helping people? Like, I see that a lot too. And I think a lot of people, Best when they're a little younger, they think, well, if I give it, then I'm going to lose something. I was like, it's the opposite, man. I think when you help people, you make the pie bigger. You get more people that look like you in IT. You start sharing. You get in management, management positions. You can hire people. Um, you can make it more diverse. So I think the more people you help, I think the, the pie gets bigger. Yeah, we should be helping each other. We shouldn't be fighting each other. Everyone should be helping each other get into the IT field and IT community. That's how I look at it. Oh, yeah, in IT, there's probably a million jobs going up field. So it's not, there's just a ton of stuff out there and a ton of work. We just need to go get it. Mm -hmm. And what what, are, what is your, like, I, I know you're, like I said, like you're a professor. So what mm -hmm. what is, a, what, what are some of the, like, what, what's your thought process on, um, I guess like teaching, like other, like, I don't want you to throw anyone under the bus, but I just want to know like, what's your, what's your thought process on teaching? Like, like, what do you think some people struggle with learning and some people don't, don't like, they, they have a hard time understanding or grasping like technologies. Like, do you break it down when you teach your students? I try to, 
Uh, the cool thing is, since I'm an intro, I think the uh, our curriculum breaks it down. Actually, our curriculum breaks it down too much because people go through some exercise and they go, what did I really learn? Because <laughs> they mm -hmm. want to, the cool thing is, an in intro, they want you to touch everything. So we do a little Active Directory, a little Linux, a little Windows. So we go through a little everything. And two is, and I, I've heard you said, and I agree with 100%, everybody doesn't learn the same way. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people want to touch it. Some people want to see me in person. Some people can just do lives by themselves. Some people need you right there with them as they talk because they're super confused. So so in my class, I try to make all those ways available. All right. So um, we do some hands on stuff. We do some uh, lab stuff. We do some curricular stuff. Then in my class, I try to talk about relevant things. So if we're talking about like um, Facial recognition, is that a attack on your privacy? So I, I'm old, I don't care, y'all gotta vote on it. Your Congress is gonna vote on that in the future, right? Mm -hmm. Is it, everybody's on Bitcoin. The Federal Reserve could make Bitcoin illegal tomorrow. Are you cool with that? Let's talk about that, right? So what does that have to do with cybersecurity? That's the privacy part of cybersecurity. Then two is, what was that? Um, Oh, I'm doing a thing. Somebody stole some uh, diamonds out of safe deposit box. That's physical security. Nobody talks about physical security of a lab or physical security of your desk or physical security of a building, right? That's that's part of cybersecurity is physical, physical security. So let's talk a little bit about physical security, right? So what does that mean? Is that a badge? Is that I need to get look at my eye retina before I go in a computer room, right? That's physical security. So I try to touch all parts of that, just not the, the glamorous part of physical. Not just the red team we hacking today. So let's talk a little <laughs> bit about everything. There's, so, a, there's, there's also engineering too. If people are calling as a fake scammers, you know. No, that yeah, that's that's huge. Right. And mm -hmm. the two is it's like you don't have to be super technical. You just tell them, I'm help desk, give me your password. Some people probably do it. Because they don't want to do it anyway. They want you to do it. But if I'm the fake guy claiming to be help desk, that probably worked, what, 10% of the time now? I don't know. We've been training a little more in the old days. That used to work a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just so many facets to to to, to cybersecurity to, just to, to work on. Yeah, it's a, uh, mm -hmm. And two is, I brought this up in one of my classes. Um, at, a, at a certain level, I think cybersecurity, our education, has failed to society. You shouldn't come out with $90,000 worth of debt and can only get a $10 an hour job. So at a certain level, we need to work college and how that's working because it's failed because millennials in debt, unless your parents have money, if you go to school, four years school, they leave it with 60, 70,000 worth of dollars worth of debt and they really don't have a real skill to get a real job. So at a certain level, we got to rework education. It's, it's kind of failed society at a certain level. Yeah, that's the other thing I talk about too. Like, if you when you go to school, like there's certain things you won't learn in school. You have to watch YouTube videos or learn from other people outside of school because they don't teach that in school. So then when you go to the job market, um, they ask you about Active Directory and all this stuff, right? And then you go mm -hmm. to a job, you don't even know what that is because in your job they don't even teach you that. Like uh, at school, they don't teach you that. No, no, they, and that's why I think certifications are a, a lot better than um, degrees because degrees people forget what degrees were made for. Degrees were to say. I understand, I can think at a high level, I can solve a project, and I'm a well-rounded person. That's why I got to take psychology, sociology, marketing. My computer science degree, I think, was 130 hours. 40 hours of that were actually IT work. The rest of that stuff was supposed to make me a better-rounded person. Mm -hmm. So do you want to pay an extra $50,000 to be a real-rounded person? I think the answer is no, but we need to figure that out as a society. I mean, we you still need a degree. Like, I am never going to argue with someone. Like, a degree does help in some cases, oh. so you still need a degree. So, but you, it should be balanced. You know, like there's more than one way to get a job in IT too. That's the other argument oh. I make. There's more than one way to get a job in IT. Several ways to get a job in IT. So, no, that's true. I think once you get into management, start moving up, and I think a lot of which I still think is wrong. A lot of people use that as a tiebreaker. If you want somebody so close and you got a degree. A lot of times they use that as a tiebreaker, but like I said, I think we need to kind of rework rework degrees. I think I, I don't know what I don't know what that actually is. Like I said, that's the debate I've actually been having and talking with other people. What does that look like? 
Yeah, we have, to, we have to come together, the YouTube community, to make something for people that are in college. Definitely got to come together and do something. It's funny Definitely. you said that. I was talking to uh, Alpha Cyber Security, and he never thought about it. I was like, we just need to take everybody's YouTube channel, especially put them together. That's a curriculum. That is a right. curriculum, yeah. yeah. So, he, so he never thought about that. And so I was like, so I can spin up Moodle. We can build a class tomorrow. <laughs> Moodle's yeah, an open source Moodle's an open source learning management system. Oh, I actually did that for a trainer. But so, I mean, like you said, so what does that look like? I think we need to talk about that as the IT sector and just kind of, kind of, kind of figure that out. And, and make, make, uh, make IT sexy again. That's it. Man. I'm trying to make Stig sexy. <laughs> I'm trying to get off red team, blue team sexy. No, <laughs> make IT sexy again. Cause IT yeah. is not, IT has a, had this, um, has this controversy where, but you're a nerd and yeah. you're, you're just a straight up nerd and you're not, you're, you're not cool at all. You know, you, you, I was actually on this other podcast. <laughs> and I told him we need to go to the club with bottles and start popping bottles and yell IT. And that's how people get cool. Cause yeah, I mean, exactly. Because everybody, everybody thinks IT, you got this pocket protector, you're getting beat up. I said, no, nah, no, nah, if everybody start making a six figures driving Corvettes, will that make the security IT sexy? So, yeah, it's a controversy where like you 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 have the Steve Urkel look, right? You know, like Family right. Matters. Like you have, the, you have the pens over here. Right. You have the glasses, and right, right. But you're not actually that. You don't like. I don't look like like. I don't want to no, look like no. that. It's just the, like the, the, the cool thing man. though is if you talk to about uh Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, mm -hmm. all those guys are billionaires. Shout out to IT. That's all I'm gonna say. All yep. those guys, that's IT right there. Shout out mm -hmm. to IT. That was that was that was the one thing like, I spoke about. So I made a post yesterday mm -hmm. because I was uh was it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. I made a post yesterday. So I'm on LinkedIn. So I made a I made a post yesterday about um um this is IT. And they're like, what do you mean this is IT? So I'm like, this is IT. When you go underneath a desk, you plug computers, you set up monitors. Um, you, you when you're help desk, this is IT for help desk. You will be setting up monitors, you will be moving somebody's shoes, you'll be oh. plugging in a cable, you'll be setting up someone's new how you'll be adjusting their monitors. That is IT. I did that computers. when I was younger, man. That is IT. I like, Mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, I, and like you said, I think too is a lot of people think they above that or you know they shouldn't do that or that's really not IT. That, that's definitely IT, especially when you when you do that for I used to do it for presidents, man. I used to go to their houses and sit up their network, man. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely IT. Man. Anyway, let's see if anyone have any more questions, and um, and then we'll let you go because I know you, you probably have a busy schedule. I know you're busy, so. I don't want to. I, I don't want to keep you here forever. You know? I, I, but, I, but, I, 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 as long as you need me, I'm here, man. I, I'm just but, relaxing. Give me a little walk on later, but you know. You have um, 30 years of IT experience, man. It's not every day I get to interview someone that has 30 years of of job experience in IT. That's that's kind of, that's scary, you know. <laughs> it is. So you gonna get 32 though, so you know. I, we probably be doing quantum computers in the next 10 years, but, <laughs> you know. It'll be virtual desktops, you know, that you typing in the air, but it'd be your keyboard. Because I never thought we'd be typing on glass. So it's mm -hmm. me each decade or something. I'm just really excited to see what 5G is going to do. Oh, yes. Yes. 4, 4G gave you Lyft and Uber. I think they destroyed the whole industries doing that. But that's a, that's a separate argument for them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be interesting to see what gets created. And I think we... Minorities and everybody, we can create stuff. You can spend stuff on Amazon. You can create the next great thing. You know, these just guys. They're from Stanford, but they're just creating uh, web pages and reading a database and just scaling it. So, mm -hmm. so what? So what's the next? What's the next big? Uh, the app. Someone was saying, "What is the opinion of cryptocurrency for cybersecurity perspective?" Um, that's a weird. Um, there's ways to hack it. There's a 51% rule from, from hacking it. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't invest in it because I don't understand it, <laughs> but from a cybersecurity, there's like five or six ways to, because uh, it sits on top of blockchain. There's five or six hacks to actually help a hack a blockchain database. So, I mean, you can Google that. So I, I look at it from a blockchain and audit perspective because theoretically, once you get so many nodes, theoretically you can't overload and then take it over and steal that particular blockchain. But if it's a small, 
Bitcoin database. It's called a 51%. If I create 51 nodes on that blockchain, I can take over that Bitcoin. Um, I don't know if that's what he was asking for. But. <laughs> Someone asked, have you talked about CompTIA Security Plus? And yeah, usually Security Plus, is, you get a lot of government contract jobs. Oh, you need that. You need that to work in the government security. You either have to have CISP, which is crazy big. Everybody usually goes with the security plus. I, I think my, I need to check, man. I've been taking my CD, my, my uh, continuing ad. Um, but yeah, you need that to work on a, uh, especially a DOD contract. You got to have a certification. Everybody goes with the security plus. I was going to ask you, a, I'm real, I got an honest, I want your honest opinion. Why do people, why do people give, give CEA such a bad rep? I don't know, to be honest. I, I, I never gave. I, I think it's the elitism. I think a lot of those people think degrees is it, and they kind of frowning on, on, on search again. Um, I work with a lot of old people that still talk like that, so I'm trying to coach them up. Yeah, because they say CEH is like a joke of a certification for security. <sighs> and I'm like, really? Like, I, I just, once again, it's red team. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think, right. You talking about the certified hacker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Certified ethical uh, hacker. Mm-hmm. I just think for us and the old guys, it's too glamorous. And they, they put, because uh, to be honest is, I mean, I think it's needed, but that's the, that's going to be the least part you do when you set up a system. You need mm-hmm. to stick it, lock it down, spin up the VM, set up the Active Directory. Then why, how do those guys come at the end and test it and get all the glory to try to hack it, right? There's a lot of things you got to do. That's like the last part of the whole security process. So I think you got the old guys hating on that. They're like, well, we set it up. We spun up the VMs. We locked it down. We did the networking, the, uh, the database, the web server, app server. So why, why, I named 15 other jobs. You didn't say nothing about them. <laughs> so I think it's just a little hate. Got it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna ask you for a big favor, but we'll talk about it later. I'm gonna ask you for a big favor, um, but not here. We'll, we'll talk about it later. I'm gonna see if you're interested. I'm not sure if you're gonna be interested in it, but I'll, I'll ask you later about this question. Let me see if anyone has any other questions. Otherwise, I'll let you go. You go relax, have some coffee, watch some Netflix or something. I don't know what you're doing in your spare time, but um, see if anyone has any more questions. I don't want to I want to keep you here too much either because I know oh, you have your schedule. As long as, long as you want to roll, I'm here for you, man. I'm the no, OG. Man, I came here no. for you, man. No, my, la- man. my last one, I went three hours, man. We could go three. Yes, yeah, I saw through. that. I saw <laughs> that. Like I tell people, I'm about this life and I'm about the smoke, so we can go. I'm yeah, good. I, I have I have a high level of respect for you because you're a professor and you've been in IT for a really long time. So man. anyone that comes into my channel that I interview, I have respect for them. Doesn't matter oh. who it is. That's oh. just how I am. I'm like that. Oh, good. But I just want to let you know, man. I'm here for you. I'm the OG. So we can go as long as you need, man. I'm, I'm happy to be on your channel. I'm here to help the young guys any way I can. I want to help you, you know, grow. You're growing. Put my oh, two cents on. There's a, oh, so the question I was going to ask you, because I'm outside of you, so I'm like, would you be comfortable with with teaching help desk security stuff? Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. No, 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 on my YouTube channel, like here, yeah. coming here and, and talking about, yeah. like, a lab Anytime environment. Anytime you want me to. Just like let me know. Making it a VM and everything. Let me know anytime. Like I said, give me a little time to, you know, make sure I'm comfortable with what you're talking about. Or if we're just talking general stuff or you want to spin up and stick something or. Yeah, exactly. That's what I want. I want you to, I want you to, like, if I could grab you for like a half hour or so, and we could do like VMs and stuff like that for security yeah. for help desk. Oh, yeah. You... Um, yeah, I'm definitely up for that. Yeah. That's one reason I care for YouTube. So people can ask me about some security stuff and VMs. And, um, and two is depending on how you want to do it. Um, I was spinning up at AWS and they actually have uh, uh, GPOs already set up that already stayed. You can just uh, put, uh, put that GPO on your OU, and then put your VM in that OU and they'd be stayed. And so there's many ways to do it. So I mean, we can do a VM. So there's a ton of ways to do it. Would yeah, you, I'll, be up, I'll be up for that. Would you be comfortable with, with, with you sharing your screen and just going over that for, for like from for help desk for people on help desk? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would be. Yeah, I'll just I, come I, in my channel and talk about it. Yeah. To be honest, I usually tell people to do it. And I usually look at the results, so I'm going to have to get on the VM and do it before I go on your channel. I usually delegate that to people. But, yeah, no, I'll be more than happy. I'll, at least I, I'll have all the checks and we can go through them. So, no, that's cool. We can figure out the best way to do it. I'll definitely be up for that. Yeah, if you're if you're if you're up if you're open next week, let me know. We could do okay. it next week or the following week. Let me know. And we'll, okay. we'll do, like, some sort of, like, a lab environment for new people in Help Desk. Okay. And then we could we could go over that and then people could ask questions in chat like I'm doing right now. 
Let's go. go over what, that. What, what what we'll do is let's go, and we will we'll meet ahead of time. Let me see the VMs. How you want to do it? And like I said, I usually just grab the, the GPLs and put them in the OUs and just kind of open them up in a browser and just kind of go through each one and match it up to the actual sticks. But we can just figure out the best way you want to do it. Yeah, we can chop it up and figure out the best way to do that. Yeah, I'd like to do something like that with you because you're a professor and you you know you got a, you got a professor <laughs> in the house, you know, and the teaching man. No, I'm definitely up for that. No, that'd be definitely cool. All right, so that's why we're gonna we're gonna do something like that for everyone that's watching because people people have been asking me a lot about um, security and what what do you what should you do in VMs and stuff like that and I know you you're into teaching kind of those things so yeah. and then they could they could come to your channel too and then we can go to your we go back and forth you know that's cool no yeah we can definitely make that work awesome man anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna let the, the audience go okay uh, we'll do something we'll we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk about yeah. something. We'll talk about something because I and, and I greatly appreciate um, you taking the time to, to come here and actually talk with me. And because I know you have your own schedule. So every time I I do like a job interview, like it doesn't matter if I do a job interview or an actual interview on YouTube. I always tell the person I greatly appreciate they take the time to talk to me because I know you have your own schedule. Yeah. I know you have your own calendar, things that you're doing, too. And um, that's just how I am. I, I appreciate the fact that you took the time to. Um, you know, your time, your day, because I know you have your own schedule. You probably have family members and everything. So I'm a I, recluse, I to be that. honest, but I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. you having me on your channel. Like I said, we, we can chop it up. Um, like I said, I, usually when I do an interview, I, I sit off a big block, but I definitely appreciate it. Awesome, man. So I'm going to let everyone go here in the chat. Uh, you have anything, last words you want to let everyone know before we go? Uh, no, like everybody say, live every day, grind every day, help desk every day. It's out there. Let's get it nothing stopping you don't nobody owe you anything you don't know anybody thing let's get the bag let's secure it uh it is a great place cyber security is a great place let's get it that's all i got any other words or you want to dance or something i'm just, I'm just kidding i'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nah, you could, you could. i'll do that i'll dance that's how I, that's what i would do <laughs> yeah. all right let me end the stream guys guys uh what i'm gonna say is i hope you guys have a good day um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope you guys stay safe. And uh, John, thank you for um, being here. Really appreciate it. No problem. Great. Great for having me. All right. Let me end the stream right now. Everyone have a good day.